Well, it's 5 o'clock on Wednesday, July the 5th, and we'll call this regular City Council meeting to order. We'd like to welcome everyone. If everyone would please uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Deb. Rodney. Tyler. Here. Don. Here. Jody. Here. Harley. Here. Brad. Here. Thank you. I'd entertain a motion then to approve today's agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Vote, please, Deb. Tyler. Yes. Don. Yes. Jody. Yes. Harley. Yes. Brad. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Across the mayor's desk, we have a few things. I'd like to thank our videographer, Sydney Casey, today. <laughs> Uh, we hope that everyone had a good 4th of July holiday. And um, again, this weekend, another special weekend is Founders Day. There's many activities planned for all ages, starting tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock on Thursday for the uh, Heritage Award, at, again, at 6 o'clock. And also, I was informed that the movie Silent Night in Algona is going to be back in Algona playing again uh, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. So. And then uh, next weekend, Saturday and Sunday, July 15th and 16th, the All Call Theater uh, will have a production, which is a lighthearted comedy called Once Upon a Mattress. So, and that's going to be a Saturday evening at 7 and Sunday at 2. So, council have anything that they would like to share? Okay. Hearing none, we will move to an update from the city administrator. Um, just to add on with the mayor mentioned with Founders Day um, coming up this year, hard to believe already, but officially kicks off on uh, tomorrow, Thursday, July 6th, with the uh, uh, Voices from the Past uh, Cemetery Walkout at Riverview. Um, Friday night, we'll have the uh, car show downtown as well as um, the parade and uh, historic walks on Thornton uh, starting from the downtown, and then Saturday. Uh, full day starting with the exercise uh, for the heart, uh, 5K, 10K walk or run starting at the fairgrounds uh, parking lot there, um, art in the park, um, kids bash, uh, the Omaha street percussion, the kids barbecue competition, uh, and then finishing up with the uh, World Food Festival uh, festival uh, Saturday afternoon and evening. So encourage folks to uh, come on down uh, to downtown Algona here. Uh, Friday and Saturday, as well as check out those other opportunities on Thursday and Sunday with the 24th Annual Founders Day. A um, couple other items, the uh, uh, transition from uh, City of Algona EMS to County EMS uh, officially occurred on uh, July 2nd. Um, so uh, that, that's the, uh, the new uh, reality we're under now. So uh, everything went smoothly. Um, so that's in effect. Uh, and then uh, just want to remind folks for, um, if they're interested in uh, status of diff various street projects with the mill and overlay or the reconstruction, they can go to the city website or city Facebook page um, and find links um, to view or sign up to receive project updates. Okay, thank you. Agenda item number seven, this is the citizen's opportunity to address the council with any item that's not on the agenda. Does anyone would like to speak? Okay. That's what I would need to do, but I do have my five plus pages ready to go. So, 
somebody please reach out to me. Thank you. Move then to the consent agenda, and that includes approving the minutes from our June 19th council meeting, uh, approve the bills to be paid this cycle, <clears throat> and to approve uh, Jacob's administrator's report. Move to approve. I'll second. We have a motion from Harley, second from Jody. Um, any discussion? Vote please, Deb. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Jody? Yes. Harley? Yes. Brett? Yes. Motion carry. Agenda item number nine under new business. This is a resolution authorizing the satisfaction of a mortgage. Uh, back in uh, 2019, uh, PEPS uh, had a uh, retail revolving loan fund, or now rebranded the small business uh, revolving loan fund with the city. Um, that loan has been paid in full. Uh, this resolution acknowledges that and authorizes the mayor and city clerk to uh, sign off to release the uh, real estate mortgage used to secure the loan. Move to approve. A second. Okay, motion from Don, second from Harley. Any discussion? Vote please, Deb. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Jody? Yes. Harley? Yes. Brad? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Doug, for that repayment. And we wish you continued success, certainly. Agenda item number 10 involves a change order. Uh, this is a uh, be proposed change order number one to the Finn Drive Rooster Street, Rooster Street reconstruction project, specifically Finn Drive. Uh, Matt Cole with uh, Bolt Mink is here and can uh, provide an overview of the uh, need and the proposed uh, uh, project addition. All right, thank you, Jacob. Um, upon pavement removal out on Finn Drive, the low point intakes um, that take the majority of the water in that whole watershed. Um, are in worse condition than we had anticipated. Um, with only doing phase one now, um, we didn't want to replace these initially with phase one just because we don't know watershed-wise we're going to get a pond on which side of the street it would potentially go on or we're just going to have to keep piping it down south to Poplar Street. Um, so we originally just ran the second barrel uh, storm sewer into the road we're going to tie on to the existing outlet pipe. Um, upon pavement removal, the, the intakes are, are not in great shape and we need to replace them um, in phase one instead of phase two. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, and uh, get those replaced and just put a pipe in flat uh, between the mail and the catch basin. That way, in the future, we can kind of route water either direction, hopefully. Um, you know, if we do get a decent sized pond. Um, either east or west of Finn Drive, you know, we may be able to make this work in the future. Obviously, we're just kind of guessing at a future condition at this point, but um, the structure will be adequate to uh, take the water for the time being and, and be safe and not be washing out and trying to patch the existing ones back to, to function for the next, you know, two to ten years, whenever phase two would happen. So, so um, just to take a step back, so when, uh, we finished the Garrigan neighborhood drainage study, I believe that was back in 21 or 22. There's kind of three parts to the um, potential long-term solution for that. So one was upsizing McCoy Street um, intakes, which we accomplished. Um, and then item two was, oops, conveying that water collected to uh, the outlet uh, down there by Fratco, which it goes out into the, the county uh, storm system. Uh, to do that, Poplar Street, uh, the existing pipes would have to be um, significantly upsized, or I think we're looking at, you know, potentially 72 inch uh, wide pipe addition to, to move that water. We looked at some options, okay, well, what could we, you know, would be some alternatives to that, and they included having uh, to create a, a storm, uh, a retention pond of about eight acres. Um, which wasn't in the cards at that time as we were going into to Finn Drive. So that's part of the reason costs just in general going up significantly over the last two years, but also that undetermined um, stormwater solution why we stopped Finn Drive where we did. So we'd still have options and time to, to figure out um, uh, that plan in the long run because I mean, we were looking, I think, at that time anywhere from like a, a two and a half to three million dollar project to um, 
retrofit and, 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 and build the drainage. So part two was conveying it, potentially the storm ponds, which uh, kind of affected this design. And then the final uh, part three of that would be extending stormwater infrastructure into the, you know, e uh, west into the neighborhood. So this thing, yeah, we'd like to kind of, we'd prefer to keep it as is, but given the existing condition, um, since we don't have a definitive timeline of, yeah, we know it's happening next year or something like that, um, that let's get the fix in place, but it'll still leave us options. So whichever route we end up hopefully being able to come up with, um, you know, we won't have to rip it out and replace all that necessarily. Yeah, there's going to be obviously a transition phase from phase one to phase two. We'll have to take out a couple panels um, that we're re pouring in phase one um, as we start phase two. But um, yeah, putting these two intakes in, um, they'll be the same style intakes that will be drilled. Um, intakes that the whole curve is wide open. Um, the pipes are on the uh, east side, right behind the, the curve. So we'll be putting, putting back right in the same place. Just So this is kind of a side view of the structure. So the uh, total cost of the change order is $25,039. Um, um, everything except for the intakes themselves are bid items. So it's just the, the unit pricing as bid. Um, Bolton's reviewed the proposed cost for the intakes and um, I found them to be reasonable. Construction, utilities, subcontractors, all that, supply chain. So I subject to change. Uh, <laughs> but right now we're um, projecting that hopefully we'll be able to, to open a Wooster back up um, late August. Um, it will be finished up. So um, they start uh, doing about a month's worth of concrete work here um, in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, so that's tentatively what we're, what we're shooting for is uh, mid to late uh, August for Wooster Street to open. Move to approve change order number one. I'll second. We have a motion from Brad, a second from Harley. Um, any other discussion? Vote please, Deb. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Jody? Yes. Harley? Yes. Brad? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Agenda item number 11 um, involves a pay application for the Central Park Skate Park project. Uh, this is a pay application um, number four um, from Spawn Ranch for the uh, skate park project. Um, per the um, payment agreement outlined in the contract, um, the final fi uh, this is the final pay app, but the, the final payment is of five percent is due within thirty days. Um, so this pay application of thirty eight thousand eight hundred fifty seven dollars and fifty cents. The recommendation tonight is to approve payment of. $25,905 um, of this payout, and then uh, the remaining uh, $12,952.50 uh, we'll plan to have on the uh, July 17th council agenda with the resolution accepting the project and authorizing final pay, uh, payment in the interim. Um, just uh, going back and forth with uh, Bolton, Spahn, and, and the city on um, just the documentation on any items noted and uh, the as-built drawings and things like that. So uh, the uh, work on the project finished up, I think it was June 28th, and then we officially opened it um, up to the public here on June 30th. Um, so that's a, 
uh, able to be used. And then uh, hopefully once we uh, get this fall can get some cooler weather, uh, we'll get some uh, uh, final grading and grass seed put down around that. Um, I know we had uh, some of the, uh, especially with the rain, of the, you know, all that dirt uh, kind of then going up there on the, the skate, uh, skate park there, but it is open for use and uh, it turned out really well. Um, so this uh, recommendation is proof partial payment of $25,905. Did we do any like testing of their repairs? See if those. You go tear it up, Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with water, you know, water wasn't standing anymore. We yeah, uh, we did actually the night before our walkthrough. I don't know how much rain we got, but we got a, a good a good chunk of rain. So the the drain that was added to the bowl that worked um, just fine. Mm -hmm. um, there were uh, two spots. Um, I have a graphic available. Um, in a different location uh, by one of the features that were a little bit low that had some water in it. Um, that one we just, you know, identified on the walkthrough as, you know, this is known. Um, that one we kind of just want to watch and see if it's something that, because it was morning when we did that walkthrough, if it's something, okay, yeah, by noon, one o'clock, that water all evaporates, you know, we're not concerned about it. Um, but we're just going to kind of watch to see, okay, how long does that water sit there if it starts causing issues. But those are, the type of things that we're just noting. There's some you know, hairline cracks here and there, um, that those are just documented and things like that. So, um, but I, I have not personally uh, tested it, but uh, I look forward to, to seeing some, some uh, folks enjoy it for sure. Tyler, second from Jody. Any other discussion? Roll call, Deb. Tyler. Yes. Don. Yes. Jody. Yes. Harley. Yes. Brad. Yes. Motion carried. Uh, agenda item number 12 is appointment to the tree board. Uh, tree board member Scott Rath's term expired June the 30th of this year, and he has chosen not to renew his term. Uh, did anyone have a chance to visit with anyone about the tree board position? Okay, um, yeah, and those of you who are watching, if you would like to uh, uh, have a term on the tree board, we cert certainly would welcome you. Uh, contact City Hall and 295-2411 and we'll share some information with you. So, and in the meantime, we'll kind of be keeping our eyes and ears open for tree board members. Then item number 13 is to set a new date and time for our first regular city council meeting in September, another holiday would be on when. Yeah, so our regular meeting would fall on September 4th, which is Labor Day. Um, so typically um, on Labor Days, we've just scheduled it for that following Tuesday. Second. We have a motion from Harley, second from Don, to move the first council meeting in September to um, the 5th of September on Tuesday. Any other discussion? Roll please, Deb. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Jody? Yes. Harley? Yes. Brad? Yes. Motion carried. Agenda item number 14 pertains to the upcoming uh, vacancy of Jody Alt's third ward council seat. Jody, I don't know if you want to say anything to, okay. to start us off. <laughs> opportunity to talk to anybody in the community about uh, the work, work, worthwhile endeavors we have here at the city and why it's important to serve our community by uh, being a council member and especially for Ward 3. So I know Jacob has some information available in this note and also about the wards and how they were uh, changed. So. Yeah, so uh, Ward 3, um, following the last uh, census, our wards were updated in 2010. So, uh, or excuse me, 2020. Um, so the appointment, uh, well, there's two options um, when there's a council vacancy. So it can be filled by appointment or by a special election. Um, traditionally, um, we've just appointed um, when there's a city council vacancy. So. Um, Either way, the, uh, the individual will have to be from the third ward of the 2022 maps, and um, that's what's up here on the screen right now. Um, if we go uh, the appointment route, uh, there's a notice that has to be published. 
Um, and then there's a 60 day window from when the seat becomes vacant that an appointment uh, needs to be made uh, with them. That will take us after September 19th, um, which would allow us either a council meeting in August or September uh, for the council to make an appointment to Ward 3. If uh, no appointment is made within that 60 days, uh, we are required to hold a special election. Um, and then the uh, um, ballot uh, question to fill the remainder of the Ward 3 term, which expires uh, December 31st, 2025. That will be on um, the November 2023 ballot um, as well. So the, uh, you know, potential, you know, for the, so the appointed term, we're just looking at a couple months um, until um, the uh, new Ward 3 member can be elected to, to fill the remainder of the term. Somebody's not sure that would be a nice internship to uh, yeah. decide if they want to continue. <laughs> With the um, last couple of appointments that we've had, the, the way we've done it is um, we've just published a notice and then set a date of any um, eligible uh, candidates residing in that ward uh, to submit a letter of interest to the, the city clerk by a certain date. Um, and then council, um, I believe we've had just work sessions with the people that submitted um, their names and kind of an informal interview, tell us why you want to uh, serve on the council. And uh, there's no other than it has to take place within 60 day, days of the seat becoming vacant. Um, there's really no hard and fast rule, uh, f rules in terms of uh, the, the details of the process as long as the, the notice uh, to do so um, is met. So I'd assume we'd, we'd follow kind of a, a similar path. Uh, there was a uh, uploaded an updated draft of a, a potential notice and timeline. So under this uh, draft, we've got um, it would be published on July 13th, and then asking persons interested in being appointment to submit a uh, letter of interest to the city clerk by July 31st. Um, and that letter to include uh, just brief personal background, length of residency in Algona, civic and community involvement, uh, relevant experience and reasons um, why they would like to serve. So I think I would give a, trying to find that balance and these dates can, in time, you know, can certainly change, but trying to find that balance of, of giving folks enough time to become aware and consider and uh, submit their name if interested, but also uh, in the interest of the, the Ward 3 uh, citizens of, of finding a, 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 a council member um, sooner than later, so. And Jacob, just for people's information, do they have to be a homeowner or can they just be a person that lives in the Ward 3 as a tenant? So, yeah, do not have to be a homeowner. Um, it's just if that's, yeah, your, I think the term is used as a bona fide resident, but it, yeah, if you, if you live in Ward 3, um, yeah, you can, so you, get, you can be a tenant as well. Okay. Any questions about what Jacob explained to us? <clears throat> I'd entertain a motion then to adopt this um, resignation and approve the initial proceedings. Motion. So moved. Second. Motion from Don, uh, second from Harley. Any other discussion? Vote please, Deb. Tyler. Yes. Don. Yes. Joni. Yes. Harley. Yes. Brad. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And again, thank you, Jody, for your service, and we appreciate you being on board with us. Yep. So. Thank you. Agenda item number 15 is general discussion on the capital projects plan and any other city business. Since this was uh, such a short um, agenda by our regular standards, I thought we'd just kind of have a discussion item at the end, but knowing our obligation to, to sit down and talk if we want to get going to party in the park or otherwise. Um, but I just wanted to provide an opportunity to provide an update on, and then if there's any questions on any of our ongoing capital projects, uh, planning, or, or any other uh, city business. Mount, if, if you have anything to add on, on, on Finn and, and Wooster. Well, I can just provide a quick yeah. update, I guess, on Arsenal. 
Oh yeah, and the mill and overlay, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we kind of went through the Finn and, Finn and Wooster project. Uh, Wooster Street will hopefully be starting to get rocked this week and potentially finish getting rocked uh, uh, next week. And then the concrete crew will come in, set string, and, and tape that street relatively fast. But by the time they do all the handwork at the intersections and sidewalks and driveways, kind of looking at that three, four weeks to know most concrete for the year. Um, get that wrapped up. Finn Drive is underground is is almost complete, but should be done tomorrow, uh, with the exception of grading and sub draining. Um, and once they get done on Booster Street, the grading crew will go to Finn and start working kind of in the south, south end, south of Snap Lot, a little more. When you talk about the library concrete work, um, what are they doing there? So we're reconfiguring the west side parking lot um, to not be 90 degree parking. Um, so with that, with the wall that was built out there with the external facade, um, they actually built the wall deeper, or the, the decoration on the wall deeper, so when we lower that pavement for some handicapped parking out there, um, we're able to kind of make that more maneuverable. So we'll have external sidewalk running outside of the wall so they can get to the main door because um, there's only one hole in that wall and it's in the middle of, of the north half of the wall anyway. Uh, and then we need to reconfigure the, the sidewalk as it comes into the north side by that wall. So if we're lowering the parking lot, we kind of just need to make all that sidewalk mesh together on the north side. So they will be doing the north side tie-in sidewalk kind of parking lot first while the middle door is still accessible from the west with the pavement still in there or the south uh, from the other parking lot. Um, and then once that concrete work is wrapped up, then they can start doing removals on the west side and on the south side to, to reconfigure some of the sidewalk and, and make it handicap accessible. The plans aren't loading very fast, I apologize. <laughs> so we're building out the sidewalk from the wall. And then the parking will be out from there too. So yep. we're gonna do diagonal parking. Yes. Okay. Yep. There do you have any concerns a... of how short that's gonna be now? In 
Um, it's actually very deep um, for perpendicular parking. Okay. Um, so it, it won't be awkward really at all for, for angle parking. Um, and there's not going to be that many stalls over there anyway. Right now it's just kind of a free for all. Um, the library is planning to do kind of a landscape area in the south half of the building. So from the door, the main door south to the, the sidewalk that would ultimately line up with Paul Street's south crossing um, is kind of going to be a, a, a streetscape, landscape type area with some, maybe some park benches and, and some kind of features that way. So, I'll go to a reading area. Do we have plans to finish the wall anymore? Because right now it looks, it's just concrete. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm not. I can't remember. Yeah, the the con the concrete uh, wall itself, um, yeah, it, th that's finished. Um, you know, if that's something in the future, the library would want to you know skin with you know something to to, to change the style. Um, um, you know, they could look to do so, but um, just trying to find the parking. So this just kind of shows the, uh, yeah. So we'll have um, out in front, that will change to um, four just regular angled parking stalls, one ADA with a loading zone parking stall, and, and then one ADA compliant, um, just five minute pickup drop off parking um, with a loading stall um, there on that north half. Um, and then wrapping around on the uh, north and um, for the sidewalk connections and marking two handicap spots in the north parking lot. And one of the bigger parts of this project is move, moving that drain, that storm drain out yep. of the driveway. Yeah. yeah. We're going to reconfigure all that. We're going to actually put a new drain in the gutter line and get the driveway to drain back to the street instead of having the street drain into the driveway. Obviously, it's falling apart over time. But, yep, so we'll put a manhole where that existing catch basin is now. That'll just have a solid lid on it, and we're going to grade everything back to the curb and put an intake in the local point of the curb. Kind of like a normal intake would be. Any other questions on kind of the ongoing projects? Um, kind of for what might be um, upcoming. Oh, thanks, Matt. Oh, yeah. yeah. I might be coming back up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, for uh, the railroad crossings, so uh, Finn Drive, we're still waiting on a uh, final sign off from the railroad um, for the proposed plans for that. Um, so I think that's all been, um, our portion of it's been in with the, the DOT, I think, from back in February or March. Um, the original goal was uh, to still and still hope to do it yet this calendar year, but it'll be about uh, over a one-week time frame. The railroad will bring their crew in. We'll have to uh, procure and hire a contractor, close that um, crossing down, and uh, completely uh, replace the uh, the crossing. Um, but we still have to yeah get the the railroad okay, and then we'll enter into the um, construction and grant agreement with the uh, DOT. And from that point, we have 18 months to complete the project. Um, and then we have also received um, tentative uh, notice of the um, funding selection for the remaining three Canadian Pacific Railroad crossings. Um, so those would be in FY25. Um, so that will uh, be something that here the um, state will officially approve late this fall. Um, then we'll start working on updated cost estimates, designs, um, have a meeting with the railroad and the engineering team in early 2024 um, and then just kind of repeat the process that we're in right now but it'll be for for three railroads same thing 18 months from the the point of that um, funding agreement signed so hopefully between uh, maybe one yet this year but if not we should uh, be uh, knocking out all four of those uh, railroad crossings here coming up in in 2024 um, so I know yeah that that would be nice. I know we've had a lot of comments and questions on those, and we know they need work. It's just kind of it's in the queue for, for the state funding, because on that, um, if the city were to do it on our own, we're responsible for you know 100% of the cost, which 
I think roughly the one just out by Fin Drive is about 150 grand. Um, or if we do this uh, funding partnership program through the state, um, it's only uh, the city share is only 20% of the total project cost. Um, and then um, other than um, the railroads, uh, hopefully next year we're. Uh, in, in 2024, we're planning a, a relatively light construction year. We'll be finishing up uh, Central Park with the installation of the splash pad features. Uh, no uh, street projects are planned for uh, major reconstruction. Um, we are looking at identifying some areas that we might want to do some uh, concrete panel replacement um, work with it being a lighter year, just kind of on our roads that are otherwise in good shape, but just a few um, chronic issues. Um, and then we're looking at for uh, mill and overlay, um, uh, about a five block section. Um, and we'll, you know, define, you know, kind of go through these plans a bit more and, and have some uh, uh, work sessions on these. But right now, kind of the leading candidate is to do the block of Thorington from Overmeyer um, North um, to McGregor, and then the block of Thorington just east of um, the courthouse. So that's about six blocks. Um, and then that would coincide with uh, potentially doing the uh, parking lot there on uh, Nebraska and Thorington in 2025, um, which I can get to in a little bit on the funding behind that as it pertains to our wastewater project if there's no kind of other questions on ongoing or upcoming street projects. So in uh, last month, we had a, our 60% design uh, meeting with WHKS, the city's uh, wastewater engineer, to go over where we're at on plans. Um, right now, the timeline that we're looking at is getting 90% uh, plan reviews in October, um, finalizing plans in December, uh, going to bid on the project um, winter of 2023-2024, and then beginning construction in 2024. Um, which will be a, a three-season um, uh, construction schedule. So the, the nutrient uh, reduction items, um, the, the nitrates and the phosphates, um, those will be on a two-year timeline uh, to hit compliance, uh, but as part of the other associated um, improvements of the elements we intentionally deferred to coincide, um, it will be a, a three-year um, construction time frame uh, because we have to uh, operate and maintain compliance all while we basically rebuild um, a new plant on site. Um, so with that, uh, we're still uh, uh, working with and planning to, to util utilize the state revolving loan fund, um, SRF, for that, uh, providing low interest loans uh, for the project. So we right now have a plan design loan with them that's on a reimbursement schedule. Uh, this September, we'll be submitting an application for the sponsored project, um, which uh, the SRF funding allows you to use a portion of your um, otherwise loan interest to be used as a, uh, to, as a grant uh, for stormwater uh, management and improvements on another project. Um, so when the city did our major sewer lining in 2016-2017, the SRF funding was used to, for the stormwater elements of the uh, more uh, street parking lot next to Threads. Uh, so kind of just a much bigger version of that. Uh, but the uh, SRF project that we're uh, planning to apply for, and uh, I've asked, uh, we've had a few meetings with Bolton Mank on what we're looking at, and they're working on a task order for the design um, of that. But it would be uh, reconstructing um, this parking lot um, here uh, behind kind of that uh, uh, Billy Joe's um, on the corner there of in the Historical Society on uh, Thornton, Nebraska. Be like looking at 2025 for that. And with that, probably the abutting um, reconstruction of all or significant portion of the abutting sections of Thornton and Nebraska Street, just given the current condition. Um, so that kind of ties into then why we're looking at for 2024, knocking out those other sections of Thornton Street. So come 2025, um, that section would, would be done. Um, and then with that uh, task order that Bolton's working on putting together for a proposed scope, um, we've asked them to kind of, uh, based on the uh, community visioning um, that we had, uh, but come up with a few um, 
kind of broader concepts for the for the area of how to redevelop it. So red's the absolutely reconstruct, orange is more than likely reconstruct, um, and then if you add in the, the yellow and the blue sections with the, the red and the orange, those are the areas that we're looking at kind of for design and placemaking as a corridor to kind of tie all those in together and what improvements should we make or to kind of give it that a, a district or a, um, a, a theme uh, with an, and a big one is tying in the uh, uh, POW Museum um, with the sidewalk pedestrian connection with the Carnegie and everything else that we have going down. So um, we've gone through a few different options of how we might do the plan design for that. Like so once we get a, a task order to share, we'll review that. Uh, but that kind of is an overview of our, our kind of our timeline and our funding for our wastewater and street projects for the next two years. That was my reminder that I need to, oh. in a few <laughs> minutes, get ahead up to Sway City. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for Jacob? Or? Um, if not, it's 540, and I would entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting on Wednesday, July 10th. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.